I know once we were supposed to have mass and the priest didn't to <laughs> I took it to the point and then we sort of left it at that point but um, I'm sure I was breaking some uh, Catholic rule there. But uh, yeah, no, it's nice and calm. I say it very often. I usually try and keep it you know, be calm. Be calm. Well done. Yeah, thank you. All right, then I'll see you. <laughs> okay, it's, it's on. Hopefully, it'll pick it up once it goes down to now. Good morning. 
Good morning. Hope you're all well. Yes, thank you. Good, can you all hear me okay? Yeah, lovely. So today is uh, communion by extension, so um, slight differences today, but um, we will administer the communion exactly the same as it would be normally. I'll come to the front and, and distribute the wafers as we go. Um, Terry has kindly agreed to play some organ music for us today, so you don't have the words and the words won't be on the screen. Um, however, I think they're fairly familiar songs, so please join in. And at the end, um, the very last song, I'm expecting everybody to joyfully clap. Okay? Even the people hid behind the pillar. Joyfully clap. Okay? I won't be because I don't joyfully clap. <laughs> but everyone else can. So let's sit and listen to our first hymn, which I can't remember what it is. Holy, holy, holy. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Brothers and sisters, in the Gospel of St. Luke we read, at supper with his disciples on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I tell you from now on, I will not drink the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We have come together in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world and to ask his forgiveness for our sins. In the union with those who have celebrated the Eucharist at All Saints Denston today, we seek God's grace in Holy Communion for as we eat this bread and drink this cup in obedience to his command, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And we say together, Almighty God, God to, to whom all hearts are open, all, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, 
Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Faithful Lord, whose steadfast love never ceases and whose mercies never come to an end, grant us grace to trust you and to receive this, to receive the gift of your love, new every morning, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We have the readings, please. New Testament reader this morning is taken from 1 Thessalonians 11.10. Paul, Silas and Timothy... To the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labour prompted by love and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're now going to hear our next song, Lord Jesus Christ.
you like to stand for the gospel reading? Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please sit down. I say these words in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, our sermon is on Matthew 22, verse 15 to 22. Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. That's usually the... um, phrase that we're here. I'm sure that like me, you've been one in, in one of those situations where someone tries to catch you out. It's a horrid feeling to feel that you are being cornered. You know, you get, you place in a difficult situation. It's miserable when someone catches you completely off guard and asks you a difficult or compromising question. And some people seem to have a real knack for doing it. And forearmed is forewarned. If you know what's coming, you can act accordingly and deflect the question. In my life, we very often have what we call God incidents. And it was funny the other day, I was thinking about this sermon. I'd read the... um, the gospel, and I was talking to somebody who said that somebody that they worked with did exactly this, lulled them into a false sense of security, was very pleasant, asked all sorts of lovely questions, and then just as they were about to to leave, they came up with something that put the person in a compromising situation, asked them a question which really they didn't feel they wanted to give the answer to because it compromised them and I'm sure you know people like that and it's a technique used when trying to extract the truth from someone and to try and catch that person out by lulling them into a full sense of security and catching them just off guard and a famous example of this is in the film The Great Escape when two English escapees are about to board a bus and they're confronted by the Gestapo and the English escapees are pretending to be French. Just watch this clip for a moment. caught him out. So they'd gone all through the uh, conversation, pretending that they were French, and then just at the end, caught him out. 
because he spoke to him in English. And whilst possibly not to such an extreme extent, I think we all know someone like that who's ready to catch us out and we've all been in a situation where we feel we do not know what to say for the best. Would you agree? You've all, you've all felt, we've all felt like that. Well, I know I certainly have. In those circumstances, the intention of the person questioning us is usually not the best, as they want information about us or someone else that they will use to gossip or try and cause trouble. And that's exactly the situation that Jesus found himself in in the story we read in Matthew. Jesus was in front of the Pharisees and the Herodians. And following his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, the authorities were out to get him. They were threatened by his growing popularity and wanted an excuse to be rid of him. They were unable to pin anything on him couldn't find anything, so they were trying to catch him out. And the Gospel says, The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. So they sent a double dose of people to entrap him. They sent the Pharisees and they sent the Herodians. And they began in a silver-tongued way. They said to him, we know that you are sincere, the one we had this morning. We know that you are a man of integrity. They lulled him into a false sense of security. Then they put a sting in the tail. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? It was a very clever question intended to catch Jesus out, whichever way he answered couldn't really give the right answer. Because the Herodians and the Pharisees were an odd combination, they were odd bedfellows, very strange to be working together. The Herodians were pro-Roman and the Pharisees were anti-Roman. So they were ruled by the Romans, the Herodians were pro-Roman, the Pharisees were anti. And no matter how Jesus answered that question, he was sure to offend one or other. To side with the Herodians was to commit heresy in the eyes of the Pharisees because to pay tribute to Caesar was in effect to bow down to other gods. But to side with the Pharisees was to commit treason in the eyes of the Herodians for to refuse to pay tribute to Caesar was an act of rebellion against the ruling authority who was the Romans. So it appeared that they caught him out. But they had not, because Jesus turned it round on them. Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. The coin had got Caesar Augustus on, who was the emperor. Jesus then asks them, whose image is minted into the coin? And they answer, Caesar's. Jesus then says, well, then give it back to Caesar. Give the money back to Caesar. Famously, the words, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. In other words, give back to Caesar the emperor the things that are his, Caesar's. And they couldn't argue with that response. But then Jesus puts a sting in his tail, in this tail. And he says, and give to God the things that are God's. They had not caught him out. Indeed, he had challenged them. And they realised that they'd not won. Jesus was not preaching anarchy. They couldn't get him on that one. And in fact, they were not prepared to engage with the next part of the statement as to what they had got to give to God. So what was Jesus referring to? What had they got to give back to God? The coins had Caesar's likeness on them. What is it that had God's likeness on it? The Pharisees and the Herodians didn't want to answer, but on that occasion they skulked away 
to plot something else against Jesus. The point is, what is it that Jesus referred to that he challenged them to give back to God? It was that which made them feel uncomfortable. And it's exactly the same question for us. What have we got to give back to God? Is it our money? Is it our possessions or is it our time? Well, it's none of the above because it's ourselves. It's you and me. We are made in the likeness of God. Just like there was an image or likeness of Caesar on the coins, so we are made in the image or likeness of God. And Genesis 1 verse 26 tells us, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. We are in God's likeness, and so we give ourselves to him. And how do we do it? How do we reflect God's image? Life is so busy, we have so many things to juggle, family, jobs, money, health, coronavirus, the list goes on. And in the busyness of all that, God can get lost. We certainly do not give ourselves fully to him. Jesus is saying that we need to give ourselves to God. God needs to be number one in our lives. How can we focus on God when he is something somewhere down on a long list of daily chores and worries? What we need to do is turn life round. If God became number one, then the other aspects of life fall into perspective. Philippians 4 verse 13 tells us, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Sadly, we forget this and busily try living life under our own steam. Whatever aspect of our lives that we think about, if we put God first, number one, he will give us the capacity to do whatever we want to do in his name. I think sometimes we begin too tied up about this. It doesn't require anything complex to have a relationship with God where he's number one in our lives. If we start each day with God, we've started in the right way. Meeting with God should not be a chore, it should be a joy. An easy start to the day is, Lord, I give you myself this day. Not hard not complex, yet it's putting God first. He will be with us and he will reflect that in the way we meet and behave with other people when we put him first. So let us give ourselves to God and be open and sincere. Amen. And we're just now going to take some time just to reflect upon those words even if there was only a little bit that you caught or you thought about, just think about putting God first in your life and listen to this song, watch this video, I Give You My Heart. This is my
we stand together to affirm our faith in the words of the Queen. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one whom we exist? I, I believe, believe and trust, trust in, in him. Do you believe in God the Son? Do you, do you believe and trust in God the Son, Jesus Christ, who took on our human nature, died for us and rose again? I, I believe, believe and, and trust, trust in, in him. him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I, I believe, believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This, this is, is our faith. faith. We, we believe and trust in one God, God Father, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please sit as we come to a time of intercession. <coughs> This response to you, O Lord, is are the ground of our being. Let us focus our gaze on the great God of our making as we pour out to him our prayers. Lord of all, give your church such maturity and wisdom that we may not be swayed from our purpose and calling by trivialities or worldly pressures, but know increasingly our dependence on you in all things, and proclaim your gospel, your steadfastness and joy. You, O oh Lord, are the ground of our being. Lord of all, give to all monarchs, leaders and heads of state graciousness and integrity, that all in power and authority may undertake their duties in a spirit of humility, that the oppressed may find a voice and the nations work together for the good of the world. You, O oh Lord, are, are the, the ground, ground of our, our being. being. Lord of all, give to our homes, the places of work and leisure, your harmony and peace. Give us grace to respect one another and ourselves in the way we talk and think and in the way we behave. And we pray today especially for our link school, Samson and Kenya, and also for local community and businesses, and also those facing redundancy or financial difficulties to changes in their work. And a special prayer also for all our schools, pupils and staff returning to all the schools and colleges, First Steps Preschool, Dove, all Saints, Rycroft, JCB Academy, Abbott's Home and Denston College. You, O oh Lord, are the ground, are the ground of, of our, our being. being. Lord of all, speak to you peace in the hearts of all who are agitated, anxious or confused. Lay your hands of healing on all who are ill and let them know your reassurance and love. And we pray for those who are sick in our community. Winnie Pearson, Pat Oakes, Ian Pearson, Sheila Jackson, Peter Tipper, John McGurr, Eileen Warren, Pat Austin, Ina Randall, and Les Unfriss. <coughs> You, O oh Lord, are the ground, the ground of, our, of being. our being. Lord of all, welcome into your kingdom. All have kept faith and now can lay their burdens down. May they rest in your peace forever. And we pray especially for the family and friends mourning Simon Whiteland and Graham Oaks. You, O oh Lord, are, are the, the ground, ground of, of our, our being. being. Lord of all, the order and complexity of creation sings your praise and we give voice to it now as we offer you our song of lives rededicated to the work of your kingdom. Merciful Father, 
accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. stand if you're able for the peace. In fellowship with the whole Church of God, with all who have been brought together by the Holy Spirit to worship on this day, and particularly with our brothers and sisters on All Saints Denston, who have celebrated the Eucharist, let us rejoice that we are called to be part of the body of Christ. Though we are Not many, many. We are. together, though we are Not many, many, we, we are, are one body. body. Because, because we, we all share, share in, in one, one bread. bread. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. Let us share a sign of peace. <laughs> just sit as we come to a, just a time of a little song about Shalom, peace be with you.
Luke 24, verses 30 to 31. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. We sang together. We sing together. Blessed Blessed are you, God God of those who hunger and thirst, for you you give us our food food in due season. season. You You nourish nourish us with your word, which is the bread of life. You strengthen us with your spirit, the new wine of your kingdom. Christ, you are food for the hungry, refreshment for the weary. Blessed are you, our creator and redeemer. Blessed be God forever. Amen. And we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Church of God of which we are members has taken bread and wine and given thanks over them according to our Lord's command. These holy gifts have been given to us that we too may share in the communion of the body and of the blood of Christ. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts with faith and thanksgiving.
Holy and blessed God, you have fed us with the body and blood of your Son and filled us with your Holy Spirit. May we honour you not only with our lips, but in lives dedicated to the service of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we, we thank, thank you for feeding us with, with the, the body and blood, blood of your Son, Son Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. 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 We have our final... Well... In the second, we'll have our final song. Any other notices today? No birthdays? No anniversaries? No? Sunday, no, Sunday school youth group? What, do you want to come and share what you've been doing? We've been learning about what we're going to do this week. I'm going to clean the rooms in the house. Rich is going to bake cakes. Jacob's going to give money to charity. Rebecca is going to do the dishwasher. And Liam's going to help cook dinner. Oh, that's very good then. <laughs> Lovely chips. <laughs> it's a shame Lily didn't agree to do the dishwasher in our house. <laughs> so we now have our our final hymn, which is Shine Jesus, Jesus Shine. Shine. Now everyone loves to sing this song, but we can sing it. So Huh? There's nothing in the rules to say we cannot clap. Mm -hmm. So please, all join in with, with clapping. Okay, okay, I'll take my lead from you guys. Okay. okay thank you, Terry.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. To, that's a smile. Oh, they're pretty good. Sometimes they moan. It's a nice jacket. Where'd you get that from? What time are we coming? Dinner. 